Alrighty, hello. Today we're going to be investigating with cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension, which are the properties of water. So we've got a couple mini tests for you. Um, feel free to try these at home. These are super easy little tests to run. You probably have most of this stuff at home. In fact, if you record yourself doing any of these five tests that we're going to go through today, and you send them to either one of your teachers, uh, we will give you some bonus points for that. Okay. Um, so the first one we're going to be taking a look at is uh, primarily the property of cohesion. We wanna see how many of those water particles we can get to stick together, okay? We're gonna be testing water and alcohol, okay? This is just rubbing alcohol. You might have some of that in your medicine cabinet. Uh, just to control my variables, I'm gonna put uh, my pennies heads up each time, and I'm gonna be using the same dropper. All right, let's see how many we can get on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Take a look at how that seems like it's bubbling up. The process of cohesion, those water particles are hanging on to each other. 25, 26, 27, 37. So the 37th one, so we'll say, we'll say 36. It held 36, and you can see the surface tension finally broke, and now my water is spreading out. Let's try that again, but now with alcohol. So 36, can you beat 36 with water? Give it a shot. All right, here's alcohol. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So twenty-two until the surface tension broke with alcohol. So we have twenty-two and for the alcohol, thirty-six for the water. Alrighty guys, so now we're gonna run the exact same test, except I'm gonna put some dish soap on the penny, and we wanna see what happens when I put the dish soap on the penny. Smear a little bit on there. And now I'm going back to the water to see how many drops I can get on my penny. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got only eleven drops before the surface tension was broken when I used my dish soap. We'll talk about why in class. Alrighty, now we're gonna take a look at surface tension. This one's super simple. You don't need a petri dish like I have here. You could do this with anything that holds water, okay? Um, and a paper clip and a fork helps. You don't need a fork. You could try to do this with your fingers, but I tend to think this is the best strategy to get this to work. Now, paperclip is not buoyant. It's not going to float. If I threw this into the water, it's going to sink right down to the bottom. However, there is surface tension at the top of this water. Those, through the process of cohesion, those water particles kind of hanging on to each other through that hydrogen bond, okay? Um, I wanna see if I can get this paperclip to rest on top of the surface tension. When you're trying this, you'll notice when you dip into the water, it's almost gonna look like you're gonna dent the water. You're literally, literally pushing down on the surface tension. It looks like skin on top of the water. You can see it. It's kind of tricky though. You have to take your time. You gotta have nice steady hands. Let's see if I can get it on the first try. Come on. There we go. Now again, this paper clip is not floating, okay? There's no buoyancy going on there. It is resting on top of the surface tension. I'm gonna make a quick mixture of just a little bit of dish soap. 
with some water. So swirl that around a little bit. I'm gonna pour a little bit of dish soap in here. Pour a little, a couple drops of dish soap in here. I just want you to observe what happens. Ready? The dish soap, because of the properties of soap, which, which again we'll talk about in class, broke the surface tension of the water, and the paper clip sink, sunk pretty. Quick. On this test, we are going to be testing water again and alcohol again, and this is going to be a measurement of specific heat. And what I mean by that is we want to see which one of these two liquids will evaporate first. All right, so I'm going to take just a regular Q-tip. I got my water and my alcohol. I got a ruler, and this is just to, to kind of control my, my variables here. I want to make the exact same amount of each liquid on the table. And all I'm doing is I'm going to take my Q-tip, I'm going to dip it in my water, I'm going to draw a line, and this it works nice because I have a black table so you can really see it. I'm going to draw a line on my table two inches long, and I'm going to start my timer. I am now going to time to see how long that takes to evaporate. If you've got another timer, so I'm going to hit lap on mine. You can run both tests at the same time. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with alcohol. Again, I'm going to go two inches and I'll hit a lap on here. So right now uh, we've got almost all of our alcohol evaporated. We're still, we got almost all of our water evaporated, so we got a little more water left over. Right now we are at uh, four minutes and 47 seconds on the alcohol and five minutes and 20 seconds on the water. We will check up with you when they both evaporate. Alrighty, we have all of our alcohol has evaporated, all of our water has evaporated. It took five minutes and 22 seconds for our alcohol to finish evaporating. And it took seven minutes and 51 seconds for our water to evaporate.